So um, when we're working with these confidence intervals, yes, we want to be sure that we're able to come up with those interval estimates, find the intervals, um, and that's usually a pretty straightforward formula or function in R that we can use. But what's really important is that we're interpreting those results correctly. So um, here are five different ways that somebody might try and interpret this interval. And let's think about which of them um, would be a good interpretation, which of them um, not correct, and how we could correct those interpretations. So let's say a researcher gets a 30-word sam uh, sample, and they come up with a 95% confidence interval, which is going from uh, 2.57 to 3.9 letters. So um, person one comes along and they say there's a 95% chance that the randomly selected that a randomly selected word has between 2.57 and 3.9 letters in it, um, and that is an incorrect interpretation. And the reason why that's not correct is because what are we trying to estimate with a population uh, with a um, confidence interval? is not what one randomly selected word's length is going to be, but what the mean of all words would be. So um, first thing to keep in mind here with these interval estimates, um, they are used to estimate a population parameter, not an individual from the population. So this population parameter should summarize the entire population. Okay, and it shouldn't be used to come up with estimates for individuals. So that's one big warning there. Um, in part B, here the interpretation is there's a 95% chance that the mean length of all words is between 2.57 and 3.9. So this does correctly um, say that we're going to use this interval to approximate the mean of all words. So it is correctly saying that this can be used to estimate a population parameter, but what's incorrect here is that these odds of success are attached to the population parameter and not to the interval. And so what's happening is each time you do this process, it's the, you're getting a different sample, but the population mean is the same. So this uncertainty of whether or not your interval is a success should be attached to the interval, not the thing you're trying to estimate, because there's nothing random about the population parameter. So this is not correct because the uncertainty is with the interval, not the population parameter. So this is also an incorrect interpretation. So the first two would not be correct. And if I were rating them on a scale of correctness, um, B is slightly more correct than A. A is just totally off for, for many reasons. Um, in part C, here we're saying that the interval from 2.57 to 3.9 will contain the mean length of words in Raspberry Beret, of all words in Raspberry Beret, 95% of the time. So here, the uncertainty is being attached to the interval. So it's saying this interval is going to be successful um, so this percentage of time. And the other good thing here is that what are we using this interval for? it is going to be used to estimate the mean length of all words in Raspberry Beret. So we'll give this a green check mark since that's a correct interpretation. Um, in part D, and, and you should be reading these and trying to think about it um, yourself before you kind of hear what, what I have to say, um, but in part D we're saying 95% of all random samples, size 30, are going to have a mean length between 2.57 and 3.90. And that's actually a correct statement. Um, it's not that that statement is incorrect, but what's not correct is what is it being used to approximate. So here, um, 
what we're not trying to do is come up with estimates for what our samples are going to look like. We're only picking one sample and we want to estimate a population parameter. So again, this would be no good since um, we're not estimating sample statistics. Okay, and lastly in part E, the statement here is we're 95% confident that the mean length of all words is between 2.57 and 3.9. Uh, again, on the scale of incorrectness, say this is not drastically far off. This is probably how a lot of people might actually explain a confidence interval. But again, to be very clear and... Um, particular about the wording that we choose, and that is that this estimate should not be attached to the thing that we're trying to estimate. It should be attached to the interval. So here, again, it's kind of similar to what happened in part B, and that is uh, the uncertainty should be with the interval. not the population parameter we're trying to estimate. So um, C is actually the only correct one. I would say B and E are, are pretty close, but if you look at statement C again, um, this uncertainty, this 95% of the time successful is being attached to the interval. So we're told that the interval is gonna contain this mean length some of the time and it won't be others and that uncertainty is not as a result of what the value of the mean is, but it's a result of the um, randomness in the sampling process that we started our um, interval construction with. Okay, so to succinctly kind of summarize the, the points from the, the previous example about correct and incorrect ways to interpret our interval estimates, um, the two main things that came up in those questions were, first, we wanna be sure what are we using these confidence intervals for? We're using them to estimate the value of a population parameter. So we wanna be sure that's what we are um, trying to estimate when we write our interpretation, we should be saying somewhere in there, we're trying to estimate the population mean or maybe some other parameter about the population. And the second point is this 95% success rate for 95% confidence interval the percentage of success or, or lack of success, that is should be attached to the interval that we've constructed, and it shouldn't be attached to the population parameter we're trying to estimate.